sorry for the machinery in the back and uh, me banging screwdrivers around, but uh, I feel like this is important enough to warrant its own little mini video. <sighs> Big Tech is committing multiple federal felonies to get back at or to suppress or to silence or well, the, the best term is to cancel people that they find ideologically inconvenient or repugnant. The thing that I'm talking about is Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire. Now, this video is not something to suck off Matt Walsh. In fact, I'm sure plenty of you who are watching this know who Matt Walsh is and don't like Matt Walsh, but this goes beyond Matt Walsh because this is a tech issue because it's not Matt Walsh or ideology that's the problem here. The hacker who broke into Matt Walsh's accounts and leaked a bunch of Matt Walsh's stuff said that they got the access to his accounts by contacting insiders at, co at corporations to get into his accounts. This person did not guess a password. They supposedly did a SIM card clone or swap or something like that. and. I mean, I can understand, and this is why I hate two-factor authentication, because if, you te if your second factor gets hijacked, which it's easy to do with a phone, then it's useless, and it can be used to reset your password on top of that. So it opens another layer of vulnerability. <clears throat> but my problem here is that, uh, and I'm sorry, I, I just got eyelashed and it's driving me nuts, so this video is going very well, as you can tell. My problem here is that it's one thing if you get hacked. If, if someone guesses your password because you were stupid enough to make a baloney one exclamation mark, you know what? That's fine. You, you, you used a stupid password. You probably deserve to have a breach. We can be guaranteed that Matt Walsh's accounts did not have simple, stupid passwords. Somebody was enabled to break into his accounts Somebody let the hacker in, and this is kind of the problem with big tech as a whole. <clears throat> Have you noticed that, that certain people, usually right-wing, but there are plenty of left-wingers too, certain people end up just magically getting banned from YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, a bunch of social media sites, all at the same time, on the same day. Isn't that suspicious? We know that it's not coincidental because it can't happen all at the same time on the same day if there's not collusion going on. There's no way that this happens across different websites several times without coordination behind the scenes. So we already know, without even discussing this further, without any further evidence, we know that these big tech sites are colluding to ban certain people, to unperson them from all of the internet that's controlled by these gigantic tech monoliths. But it goes a step further here. Oh, of course the light's going to go away. It goes a step further here because not only are these people or these big tech companies doing this unpersoning, but now with Matt Walsh, the hacker who leaked the stuff is claiming that an insider opened the door for them. That someone at the company, which would mean someone at Google or the phone company or somewhere, but there are people on the inside giving them information, and maybe they weren't supposed to reveal this. But I've actually had a suspicion that this was the case for a long time. I wonder how somebody who doesn't have two-factor authentication to breach and use as a password reset mechanism, who has a good password set, who doesn't reveal their Gmail account that's used as the backbone of their Google services, has their Google accounts broken into. And yes, I'm aware of the cookie attacks. I'm aware that if you run something stupid on your computer, if you open that PDF attachment that's infected and actually runs executable code, I'm aware that that can give them access to your cookies, which gives them access to your login without your password because the cookies are sort of a substitute for your password. I know that that happens. <clears throat> but bear with me here. How can someone at a pretty decent-sized company who is constantly threatened, very security-minded because they have no choice but to be, probably not running shady stuff, so their cookies aren't getting hijacked. 
They have 2FA set up. Oh, okay. They have two-factor authentication, which is supposed to protect you. They have a good password. They don't tell everyone what the Gmail account is that runs those services. How are they still getting breached anyway? There's no way for the hacker to get the credentials. How did they get the credentials? My suspicion has always been that somebody on the inside of these companies is going, hey, 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 here, here's, the, here's the stuff to get in to, you know, XYZ person we don't like locker. Here you go, but don't tell anybody where you got it. Okay, I won't. And then the hacker goes, oh, hey, thank you. Thank you for the stuff to get into uh, Matt Walsh or whoever's private things and ruin their life and make things really bad for them. I appreciate it. I won't tell anybody about it. Of course, the oven goes off right whenever I say that. I've been thinking this has been happening, but the hacker saying that it's been happening has confirmed it. This is all the confirmation I need to reinforce my conspiracy theory that big tech companies are committing federal felonies, violating the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act of 1984 by opening the door secretly for other people to breach accounts that they do not have permission to be in. And when you have an account at a provider, you are the only one authorized to get into that account. Now granted, the people on the back end could get into that account, but that's not the people who are doing it. People who enable federal felonies are themselves guilty of federal crimes. So no matter how you slice and dice this, big tech companies are committing federal crimes to unperson people like Matt Walsh that they don't like, that say things that they don't like. Make of that what you will. Please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I would love to hear your thoughts, because this should be very interesting. And please try not to get into silly little political scraps. This is bigger than one side or the other. This is a problem that affects us all. Take care.